are slowly coming in. Again, we do have some outside seating. Uh, you are, uh, I feel safer out there. Uh, striving to do the best that we can uh, to keep safe. Again, thank you also for all of you who are joining us online. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. And uh, sometimes we need to be reminded because sometimes people don't wake up the next day, if you know what I mean. Yes? So how, if, how difficult it was this week, this month, obviously this year, there is still a God that's on the throne. If you agree with that, say hallelujah. hallelujah. He's in control of all things. He still has a purpose and a plan in everything. And that we are to trust him because he is a good God. And I want to remind you, as uh, my brother Dotto is coming up here to, to pray, that God is still on the throne. Yes? He's got a purpose in all things. And I want to remind you also, if some of us are, are doubting God, doubting his goodness, remember he said that trials will happen in this life. And remember the next next uh, scripture verse which says after that, but take heart. He says, I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. So Dada, come, let's pray. Uh, let's give glory to God. I don't, I'm going to ask if you're physically willing and able to come and stand before the Lord and uh, and have the freedom to worship biblically in response to our Lord God. Thank you, Dada. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, I just think you will just say thank you to the Lord for His uh, blessings to all of us. And also, I would like to thank Pastor for his leadership for reaching out. I, I remember that you said that before and I said, who and how? But when you started with all your uh, crew, they're really moving. And thank you, Pastor. The thing is, your crew, they're all retired. <laughs> I call, I, we call them retarded because we're all retired. <laughs> Most of them are. <laughs> but it, working on the field, that's first time to me, really. It's been a while. We don't do that. But thank you, Pastor, for your effort. Thank you, both of uh, the whole church, for your support also. God bless. So let's pray. Dear Lord, as I call on you today, I realize that often come asking for favors. Today, I'd like just to be in your presence. Let my heart respond to your love. As we come to you today, O oh Lord, as we come to you today, O oh Lord, longing for your presence. I decide to love you as you love us. May nothing ever separate us from you. Lord, as we come to you today, with our heart and our whole being, with the wonder of your presence. Thank you so much for all your blessings. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning once again, church. Thank you for joining us this morning and you too online. Let us rejoice and be glad in it for he is good. Amen, church. I want you to praise him. Make a joyful noise in this place. Let's praise him.
Suffering and trials does not mean that you are absent. But in this fallen world, in difficulty, in hardship, we claim joy and peace because of you, God. We pray, Father, that you'll open our eyes to see what you see. And if we can't see what you see, may we have faith that you are still God, that you are on the throne, you are running things, that you are the God of love. And I'm just reminded that, yes, your kingdom come, your kingdom is here, but this is not heaven just yet. And that we are in this blessed struggle called life. And so, Lord, where there's pain, when there is disease, when there is sickness of someone that we know right now, or even if it's just us, I think of joint pains when we wake up and Whatever, Father, I ask, Lord God, in the powerful name of Jesus, and we will worship you and have faith in you no matter what you choose to do, but I ask in the powerful name of Jesus that you'll purge that sickness out of there, that you remove it from the body. Yes, God, like I said, we will worship you no matter what you choose to do, but you hear the prayers of your children, so we ask, Lord God, nothing that we are not miracle workers. You are the God of miracles. You are the amazing God. We ask for healing on bodies. As we move forward, we ask for healing on our relationships. Father, where there's broken relationships in our family, where there needs to be healing and restoration, Lord God, where there needs to be forgiveness and renewal, so let it be. And we can't do it on our own strength, obviously, God. That's why we call on your powerful name that you will restore relationships. Where patience needs to be May you give us your patience. May you continue to unify our church and all of the Vallejo christ Center churches. That we will be one body, move in one spirit. Amen. As we pray over all the pastors, all the leaders, all the church members. And obviously in Jesus' name, I have no idea, but we pray against this pandemic that it will be lifted, that the cure will, be, will ultimately come from you, Lord God, whatever that means, Lord God. I don't know what that means exactly, but may you be the cure of it all. Yes, we want to understand, we want to understand why, why all these things are happening, but 
most of all at our core, may we respond like Jesus in every circumstance. Father, we pray against mental illness, Lord God. Just hearing all the, the rampant of thoughts and suicide, and obviously violence and murder upon our city, Lord God. We pray, Father, that every captive thought, when we are going crazy, when we are, when we're just worried, when there's anxiety, we pray, God, we trust in doctors and the advice and even medicines, but ultimately we come to you, our core, our rock, our salvation. We pray for our first responders, our doctors, our nurses. We pray for our teachers. As we as parents complain at times, Father, these teachers are working so hard, a new way of teaching, Lord God. May you lift their spirits up. And as I pray for these teachers, I don't know how, Father, may they be drawn to Jesus. So we give you this day. We appreciate you, our Lord Jesus Christ. You are our everything. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say. Amen. You may have a seat as you have a seat. I want you to just uh, recap on this video. Uh, this video is just the last few four or five days of what has been uh, happening in the life of our church. Again, when I show videos or I post them online, it's not to pat ourselves on the back and bring our church glory. Everything that we do, everything that we post, hopefully will lift up the name of Jesus. And so just as a recap of uh, us, not just gathered together, but sent out in the community. And uh, there, you ever put that on? Uh, and again, thank you so much uh, for uh, coming and, and helping us pass out food boxes uh, to Heart, 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 Heartwood, Heart, Heartwood Care Center, uh, you know, serving uh, alongside Joseph guys, and uh, picking up trash yesterday at Lake Dalwig, uh, and uh, grabbing a shoebox for Operation Christmas Child. So thanks, Derek, whenever you can. shoulders with people uh, in, the, in the community and every time we've gone this is our third time 
I always hear a phrase like this, man, it's so good that the churches are coming out. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, I mean, that's what it's about, that, they, uh, that we're rubbing shoulders with, uh, with, uh, with fellow citizens and just cleaning up the parks. And so uh, I think I'm going to be continually doing, they do like two cleanups per month, uh, and they pick different areas in terms of Vallejo, so, so praise God for that. Kathleen's going to come, and we're going to share a little bit more announcements, and we'll go from there. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right, so I just have some uh, exciting announcements, okay? First one is our Operation Christmas boxes. Our last day to bring boxes will be on November 22nd. And I believe that's going to be our uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. So if you bring the boxes, thank you so, uh, so much. If you haven't, you still have time. And if you need more boxes, come and see me. I, I believe there's more boxes on the table in the back. Uh, men's ministry and women's ministry are meeting after the service to uh, for a quick meeting. Uh, see Uncle Romy Tabaransa and I believe Atitala uh, would like to gather uh, the women's after service. Um, also, our groupings, housekeeping assignments are posted on our group me, uh, group me, <laughs> on our group me. But also, I posted it in the back in the fellowship hall before you go to the kitchen. You'll see your groupings. If you have any um, conflicts or whatever, you know, if you if, if the groupings is not uh, gonna work uh, for you, come see Uncle Romy Tabaransa. Also, it's listed there. Um, what are expected, you know, doing housekeeping in our church, um, not just the inside of the church, you know, outside also. Uh, you are uh, your group also is responsible for the outside. Um, all right, so midweek prayer meeting. Um, I know a lot of people are asking pastor already, when can we open our church for Wednesday Bible studies? So we are just, the board and pastor are carefully uh, praying, when can we open again? But for now, we are uh, doing our Zoom meetings every Tuesdays. We have adult Bible study leading by Jake. And then Wednesdays, we have Matthew for NYI. And then Thursdays, we have our uh, adult by uh, Uncle Emil, uh, so. But for now, we're just gonna continue praying. We wanna really make sure that everyone is safe. Uh, and then if we have more, you know, if um, we decided to open when, are we gonna open the Wednesdays? Uh, we, we will let, let you guys know. Um, also today is a special day. Anybody? I don't know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, today we are gonna, uh, we're honoring our pastors. We, we are gonna show them how much we love them and we're gonna appreciate them. So after the pastor service, uh, we're gonna, um, you know, just honor them. So anybody else have an announcement? Right. This time we're going to uh, pray for the offering if uh, Minna can come. Can't see where she is. Uh, Minda, thank you. Come, come and now. Uh, Pray for us as uh, Sister Minda is coming. Uh, early January of 1992, uh, I could not afford to go to winter camp as a senior in high school. 1992, I was a senior in high school, and I couldn't afford it. I just uh, stumbled into this church, this new church, a new youth group. Uh, but because families gave, I'm going to say that again. Right? This, this offering doesn't just pay for the fans to twirl and the lights to turn on and to pay for the water. Because people gave, I was able to go to a Christian camp. And over that weekend, I surrendered my life to Jesus. Amen. So this offering is not just, um, and I hope you don't feel that, that oh, the church wants our money, the church wants our money. We get to do this. Amen. Yes? Amen. And we have no idea that the giving can go. Hopefully you're seeing already that it's, it's pushing us out and moving us out to not only take care of each other, but to go and reach a lost and broken world, to save punk kids like me. Amen? Amen. So I'm asking men to come and uh, bless us, pray for us. And dur during the offering time, we have another special number by Jake and Angela. Uh, so I'm Sunday after Sunday now, we have seen how the church is giving out services. Now, last week was food. And now is the time for us to give our tithes and offerings. But before we do that, I would like to read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 6 to 8. 
Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will be you will abound in every good work. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this reminder again. So help us, oh God, to respond and according to your will. We speak to our hearts, oh God, because we know that for the furtherance and the fulfillment of your kingdom also depends on how we, your children, respond on our tithes and offerings and our givings, not only financially, but ourselves. So Father God, even as we give our tithes and offerings, we pray, I pray that you'll bless every, every hand, every family, every single of us, that you will bless the gift and the giver. I know, Lord, that you know all our needs, and just responding to your will and obeying you, we know, Lord, that the blessing is awaiting for us. So thank you, God, for your faithfulness and goodness. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Amen.
if there's still kids here, uh, you guys are dismissed. I think they're already gone to Children's Church. Check one, two, there I am. Angela, Jake, great job. As the Word of God is going to be on the screen, we are uh, continuing to uh, dive into 2 Peter chapter 1. We finished through the series of 1 Peter. Uh, it's going to be on the screen, but I just want to uh, just take time to welcome all of the pastors, pastors who have been here for a while. Thank you, pastors that have filled in uh, while waiting for a pastor, uh, Pastor Roy, all of you guys, uh, Carlitos, uh, everybody out there I can't see, but... Um, Thank you so much for being here, um, and, and I'm, I'm thinking about that, that I'm the youngest out of all of you. <laughs> you guys are crazy giving me the pulpit and the leadership, but praise the Lord. Um, we have a crazy, amazing God, yes, crazy in love with us, yeah. Now I want to remind you, you know, sometimes I've been through a, a church service and you just sit there and you just maybe, you, you can't wait till it's done. Or, man, I've got so many other things to do, but I want to remind you that there's a God He's living and breathing, and He has a purpose for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Word of God says this in 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 3. If you don't have a, a Bible with you, I will have it on the, on the screen most of the time every Sunday. But it says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Is someone going to bring me a water bottle? Uh, through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world, thank you, Joe, caused by evil desires. Again, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Desires. I remember when I went to college, I went to a junior college first at Moore Park Junior College in uh, Southern California, and then I went off to Point Loma Nazarene University to finish uh, my Bible degree, and I remember coming home to, uh, back to Simi Valley, the, the town that I uh, grew up in in terms of junior high and high school, and I ran into old high school friends. Now, these are high school friends because, I, like I said, I became a Christian. I gave my life to the Lord my senior year of high school. And these are high school friends that have not seen the new Tim. Yeah? And uh, I ran back into them, and, you know, we were asking each other, what are you studying? Uh, what, what are you studying in college? And I told them, I'm studying theology. And they said, is that, is that religion? I'm like, yeah. yes. Uh, and I remember telling them, again, I was a young, young Christian then, okay, and I remember telling them this. As soon as I said I'm studying theology and biblical studies, uh, this, is the thing, this is the next thing I said, and I'm just being very honest with you. I told them this, but I'm still cool. I'm still cool. You know, I like to go to watch rock bands. I'm still, I'm still Tim, right? And I remember saying that and looking back at it now, what I wish I would have told them is this. I, I am a new creation. That old Tim is gone. Whatever cool standards you are measuring people to, I have been made new. Not perfect, right? Still, there's still struggle, but being perfected, right? But I wish I could have told them now and just be completely honest with them. Look, I have found this Jesus, which I believe you can too. And my life has been transformed. I have been made new. I am no longer... I'm living otherworldly now. This is a different life for me, a different calling for me, that anyone, if they choose to do it, can enjoy it also. That's what I wish I would have told them. Because I read verses like this to back up Second Peter. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this what? If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders, but now my kingdom is from another place, right? And I remember entering the Christian world. You know what helped me? We all have different avenues in terms of the Christian world that will draw us to Jesus. I discovered Christian runk, uh, runk, uh, Christian uh, punk rock music. There is such a thing if you have no idea. 
right? In the early 90s, late 80s, uh, when I became a Christian, what helped me was going to these concerts, and these concerts were filled with Christians, and the music might, might scare you, right? But I remember coming into those, I remember going to concerts, watching like um, uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and whatnot, they have a mosh pit at a Christian concert, right? They'll have a mosh pit, but if you get knocked down, they'll help you up. Right? It was just a whole nother world, right? It was just a whole nother world of being, right? Jesus saves us. If you agree, say yes. I, you know, Jesus saves us, and we're reminded in Scripture time and time again, it will take someone not of this world to save us. And I just took a step back, and I'm realizing three things. We are saved by God alone. Obviously, if you agree with that, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Number two kind of took me back a little bit, because I had to really process this. We are saved from the wrath of God. I want to say that again. Some people don't like that. What? God's angry? Can we say that in church? I thought he was loving, but sin must be punished. He is such a pure and holy God that he cannot stand to be in the presence of sin. And so I'm reminded also, we are saved by God alone. We are saved from what we deserve. We don't deserve anything. But a good God says, I will give you everything. Amen. Yes? We are saved from what we deserve. And we are saved for God, for His will and His way, for His kingdom, for His world. And when we do that, when we focus it all about Him, in turn, what will happen is it should bleed into loving everybody else. And that's what it looks like to live not of this world, that we are saved by God alone. We are saved from God, and we are saved for God. Let's jump into the Word of God. Uh, we'll go we'll take it. That's Corey right there. So his divine power. Everyone say power. 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 So it says here that his divine power. I just lost it again. Where is this? One more time. There you go. His divine power has given us everything we need. So right there, God is communicating that He's divine. He's given us everything that we need. I'm going to present to you a list really quick, right from the Word of God, right? But He's saying here right from the bat, right from the beginning, that God's power has given us everything that we need. How good does it feel to have everything you need um, when you go camping, right? When you go camping, uh, you know, you brought, brought the stove, you know, you brought, you brought matches, you, you didn't forget your kids. You know, all those, all those things, right? You got everything you need. Uh, when, when you play sports, that you brought all the equipment, right? That you got everything you need. When, you, uh, uh, when, you're, when you're cooking, right? That you have the, enough flour. It feels great to have everything that you need. Would you agree? Yeah. And we're reminded here that we have everything we need to live for a godly life. You see that? Gyms. How many like going to the gym? Nobody, right? Uh, I know gyms, most gyms are closed right now, but just think about the gym. You walk into a gym. You've seen a gym at least, right? You walk in there and uh, it's, they've got different rooms, uh, cardio room, weight room. Some of them have a basketball court. But you walk into the, into the room and there's all these different machines, yes? And we're reminded here that when you go into a gym, you have everything that you need to be stronger, to be healthy, to work on your heart muscle, to work on your muscles in general, right? We have, you go into a gym, you have everything you need to work on your health, yes? But our responsibility is to get on that treadmill. You see that? Our responsibility is to sit down and lift that weight because we've been given everything that we need. Yes? God has given us everything we need to be like Him, to live for Him. Obviously, in and through the Holy Spirit, but in and through each other. 
Bible study, outreach opportunities, the word of God, prayer and fasting. All these things that God has said, I've given you everything you need for a godly life. Amen? Amen. Some of you guys are like, yes, I know that, I know that. But sometimes life is so difficult. I cannot imagine being captured for just being who I am in my race in a concentration camp in Corrie ten Boom, Nazi Germany, during World War II, right? What does she say, right? There is no pit so deep where God is not deeper still. There is no pit so deep where God is not deeper still. And sometimes we complain about our own struggles. And, you know, I don't have this, or the money hasn't come in yet, or whatever it is, right? And I'm just reminded that, yes, there's some times where you're going to be rattled and frazzled and you don't want to go on, but I'm just reminded that those are the times where we just call out the name of God and say, God, help me to respond like you. This is just so overwhelming right now. I just want to quit. I want to give up. And you see, you've seen me crying and yelling and, and, and just, how can I? And those are the times where we call on the name of Jesus because he's given us everything we need to continue on to godly, holy living. Amen? Amen. Have you ever escaped something that was uh, fearful and tragic? You've escaped from it. You've ran away from it, right? I remember stories of my dad talking to me about my, my Lolo, my, my, my grandfather, uh, surviving, escaping, actually. He was the, uh, a colonel in the Filipino army, right? And he not only survived the Bataan march, but he was able to, him and a few other officers, was, was able to escape and survive and he was able to continue to serve uh, in the military. And he was one of the first uh, Filipino officers to become a U.S. citizen. Right? But I, I remember him telling us stories of just, you know, escaping tragedy. And I wanted you to see and get that visual that belonging to Jesus, living otherworldly, is about escaping tragedy. Right? It's leaving the old way behind. And running after him. Amen? Amen? So here's the list. So he's given us everything we need to do this. Alright, let me break it down here. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to, to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection what? Love. Love. And so we know that belonging to Jesus, it's about chasing after these things, because these things is who He is. Yes? And He's saying, look, we can live this out. I've given you everything that we need. Not on our own strength, right? But it's relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, relying on the, the church. What does that mean? What does that mean? When, you, when you're having a hard time and you're going through difficulties, when you want to quit, that if someone that, like that was me, I would call Joseph, or I'd call Ray, or I'd call Lloyd, call Roy, call Willie, call Jay. Hey, I'm having a hard time. I feel like giving up today. Right. Can we just go on a drive? Can you pray for me? Yes? It's like, Joseph, I'm having a, a trouble with, with persevering or self-control. Can you pray for me? Again, it talks about this. I want to just reread it again. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. So we deal with every day. We have victory in Christ, we have victory in Jesus, don't get me wrong, but we live either in the kingdom of the world or the kingdom of God, 
right? If you remember that Keanu Reeves movie, The Matrix, you guys watch The Matrix, right? Uh, red pill, blue pill. Remember that scene, right? Just to kind of recap the, the scene, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, a future event, it's very scientific, and uh, what was happening with the world that they were actually in a dream world. It was a fake world. And one of the characters went up to Keanu Reeves' character, look, if you take the red pill, I'm going to show you what the world is really like. But if you take the blue pill, you're going to go on living. But you're going to be very ignorant of what life is really like. Right? And so we're reminded here that Jesus is saying, look, we belong to a different world. And he's trying to show us that it's about living and having our eyes open that everything that we do now, we funnel it through the cross. Every activity, when we're on the internet, when we're at school, when we're at the workplace, when we're picking up trash, everything that we do is funneled through the worldview of Jesus. Yes? Not, like I said, not brainwashed. How many of you guys have gotten that? Oh, you Christians, you're brainwashed, right? And I tell them, yes, I am. I've been washed by the blood of Jesus, right? That I now am truly seeing what this world is. So let's go back to this list again. <coughs> They're working there. There you go. Joseph, I want to pick on you real quick. Come, come up to the stage, please. He has no idea what he's going to do. Um, it's right here. I'm going to reread this list, okay? Come right here, Joe. Uh, I'm going to reread this list, okay? So. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, wait, hold that, and then to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, uh, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection here. You can, you're strong, Joanne. <laughs> you're good arm, arm. All right, so hey, look, sometimes we read verses like this, and we feel like it's like this. Let me just, hear me out here, people. Sometimes we read verses like this. Man, I, I, man I'm coming to church. I got to do this now. I got to do this now. I have to do this. Uh, I'm not doing good in this. And so it's, we feel like this is just things I have to do. And we add and we add and add. But let me reread it to you again. This is what it should do, church. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, what? Love. Love. Give them a big hand. It should take the burden and the weight away. I'm not saying, and I'm not sugarcoating that it's, it's not difficult to be self-controlled, and to persevere, and to be godly. But Jesus, every time he gives a command, may it not just be weight added, I have to do extra things and do all this, but it should free you from the baggage and the weight. Amen? amen. I said amen? amen. And so we just, you know, I want to honor the word. Moral, you know, goodness is moral excellence and uprightness, knowledge, you know, to truly know what you believe. Uh, to know truth, self-control, to master restraint, perseverance, to endure, patient waiting, godliness, which is, you know, devotion and, and Christ-like living, brotherly kindness is affection towards the brothers and sisters, right? And obviously love, and moreover, the agape love, right? The self-sacrificing love that we have for our brothers and sisters. God is saying, I've given you everything you need, and it should be free, that you can live for him and like him. Amen? Amen. Amen? When you fail, not if, this is what you need to do. Own up to it right away. Do not let the enemy, the devil, get a foothold and bring you down. 
maybe call a few people in accountability within your maybe Zoom Bible study to pray for you and to lift you up. Don't let it fester. Acknowledge it and continue the race that's marked out for you. Amen? Amen. If the worship team would come up, uh, we're going to end it right here. I just trash the stage here. <laughs> so, it says this. Oh, it did say that. Derek, if you can get up one more time. Sometimes Derek has no idea what I'm doing, so he's just, just off the cuff doing uh, what Pastor wants, and I am so grateful, Derek. Look, for if you possess these qualities, what qualities? What qualities? The, 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 the list, right? If you possess these qualities in an increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of your, our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. You guys see that? If we don't have these qualities, God's word is saying it's like we're forgetting. It's like we're forgetting. Forgetting what? Forgetting who they are in Christ. Forgetting what? Forgetting that they have been forgiven. Forgetting that they owe everything to God. Forgetting that the need of why they needed to be rescued. Forgetting that they don't deserve every breath that they take. God's saying if we don't possess these qualities, it's like we're forgetting. Forgetting His goodness. His grace, His mercy. Amen? Amen. Can you imagine if, if right now was a funeral? Hear me out. You know, in a funeral, what do we do? We memorialize, right? Those we love. And we come to a funeral, and part of a funeral is to speak the good, right? Um, about the person, right? That you give the eulogy, you give the blessing, you speak the good of. And so I want you to imagine right now, at this end of the service, that this is a funeral. I want you to imagine, ah, who can I pick on here? Lloyd, hey, there he is. Lloyd, imagine if we are honors, honoring Colston, your son, and Colston just did something to give his life for all of us here in this room. Okay, I want you to imagine that, Pastor Lloyd. So this day is now the funeral, right? And we are honoring Colston for what he did for us. And remembering him. So can you imagine coming to the funeral, the service? Imagine if, Lloyd, if you were up here and the, the minister was giving the message and going to the funeral. Imagine, Lloyd, if you saw people and you look out on the stage uh, just kind of tuning out and saying, when is this over? Okay? I want you to think about how would you feel? Right? Just think about it. Imagine this right now is the funeral and Lloyd is looking at maybe some people in the back just kind of goofing off, right? Maybe writing notes to each other. And Lloyd, how would you feel, right? Imagine if you're up here in the funeral and Again, your son is right there, and you are, we're striving to honor him, and people are just tuning out. I can't wait till this is done. The church service is kind of like a funeral. Hear me out. We are honoring someone that died. Yes? And we are going to strive to never forget what that person did for us. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's more than a funeral. He died and rose again. Hallelujah. Glory. Eternity. Right? I know that. But coming into church service, we are remembering and honoring someone that gave up everything so that we can live. Amen? And we joke around about first world problems. We do. I do. I complain when I have to go back 
to my car for a second load of groceries, my life is difficult, right? Why couldn't I get all five bags and put them in the kitchen, right? I actually said that out loud, out loud, right? My life is terrible, right? Oh, my poor Tim, I have to take care of my huge backyard, right? How am I going to mow this? I actually said that out loud. Thanks a lot, church, for giving me this backyard that I can't. And then I, in all realization, I have this kingdom that I can discover backyard, in my backyard, right? Reading the other day that in the Philippines, some kids have to cluster in one area in the Philippines because there's only internet in one area to go to school. And some of them don't even have laptops. I read that. Thank you, Roman, for sharing that. It's just time to step back and say, man, I guess gotta be reminded and not ever forget, because when we forget when we live like, when we don't live like this, we're forgetting His goodness and His grace and His mercy. Yes, sometimes you've got to vent to a best friend and say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this. And yes, your first world problems are legitimate problems. They are. I'm not knocking that. But maybe to take a step back and say, God, help me to be thankful. Open my eyes to what you see. Because I want to remind you, He is everything that we need to live after Him. We're reminded that we are to be who God has created us to be, as difficult as it is at time, times. We are to never forget who He is, what He's done for us, our eternal destination. That a lost and broken world is, when we are picking up trash, is looking to us to see hope and light. Amen? We're going to close in song. And then we've got another special song here, and then Pastor Lord's going to close us in prayer. But let, let's, let's pray together as the worship team is reminding us about the throne room and worship. Holy God, may we never forget. May we never tune you out and forgive us when we do. When life is crazy, when we're so worried about someone we love, when we can't go on any longer, when we want to cry tears, when we want to punch a wall, that you are God, that your word says that we will go through difficult circumstances. But this is not eternity with you. And so I ask, Father, that we will never forget that as we dismiss today, that we will continue to be the people you've called us to be. And that you'll open our eyes to all the things you've given us so that we can be holy. That we will jump on that weight set. That we will jump on that treadmill. As hard as it is sometimes. You will and always will get all the glory. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people say. last song you're welcome to stand or sit however you're comfortable with as we sing this last song in prayer Jesus Christ.
the, the kids are getting ready. Uh, if the kids don't come soon, I will dance in front of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ness and I will break dance right now. <laughs> again, from the bottom of my heart, uh, again, thank you, pastors who are here. Uh, again, uh, you know, I'm just humbled uh, that, again, like I, I joked around about it that I'm the youngest out of all of you, but I am humbled that church that you would give me the, the authority and the leadership to lead, uh, knowing that there's so many capable leaders here. And so, uh, as the kids are honoring my wife and I, we obviously we honor all the pastors here. So I'm going to turn it over to the kids. They're on their way. <laughs> <laughs>
Give a hand to the kids. <laughs> right? Today is a very special day because uh, 2020 years ago, <laughs> when the apostles were given the mandate to share the good news to the world, to all nations and peoples around the world, that job is still going on. Amen. Okay. From the apostles, to Peter, to Paul, to the churches in the Middle East, and everywhere, the word is being shared through people with devotions in their hearts, with the strength of the Holy Spirit with faith that is unmatched, the effort goes on. And today, the effort is led by the pastors, and we have a fair share of pastors who are keeping the word alive and being shared throughout. Amen. And we would like to recognize them today. Okay? Yeah, good morning church. Uh, it is our privilege to uh, lead this uh, congregation in honoring our pastors. Yeah, we have many pastors in this church. Are we not blessed? Amen. 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 Yes, and so we would like to call their names, those who have given life to this church by their words of truth. And so uh, I would like to call on our pastors that we were blessed with, okay? Um, Billy and Angie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we would also like to honor uh, Billy and uh, Pastor Billy and Angie Versailles. Billy and uh, Angie are leading the uh, yeah. the Church of the Nazarene in Oakland. The minister in church. <laughs> Also, the times we need really to fill the pulpit. Billy is here with us, sharing with us the message. Okay, and our brand new friend and pastor who has been around us and uh, helping uh, Pastor Tim ever since back in Maui. So I'm honored to call Pastor Lloyd and Tanya Lopez. Mm -hmm. Pastor Lloyd and Tanya has moved in from Hawaii to the Bay Area to join us and support the ministry of Pastor Tim. And um, of course, our um, stepdad, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Jim and Sharon Monk, who has been very gracious enough to give their time while we were looking and waiting for our pastor. Pastor Jim, we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Pastor Jim has been with us since the month of December through March. That's a great service to us. Thank you very much, Pastor Jim. Thank you. And um, I call on Camilo, Pastor Camilo, and Pastora Carlita Versailles. And whoever represents the Pastor Camilo and Pastor Carlita Versailles is always there with us whenever we need to fill the pulpit. It still is. They still are providing us the service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pastor Roy and Joyce Lagusta. The Roy and Joyce has been serving the Oakland Church of the Nazarene and serving as the assistant pastor to Pastor Willie Brussels. And also filling the pulpit for us. And of course, Pastor 
hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And of course, our beloved brother, pastor, who has gone from us to babysit, right? Right, children? <laughs> yeah, they have a apostolic ministry, a post, right? And so we welcome you back and we appreciate you. This church loves you. Carlito Liza Riola. Pastor Carlito Riola, the church as the music director for more than 10 years. More. Oh, 20 years. More than 20 years. Whoa. <laughs> we really appreciate all the efforts you have given us and the ministry of our church. Yes. Our church has grown to be this, uh, not in quantity, but the quality of the heart. And we forever praise God. Our praises will over will always be on our lips because of what he has done to our church. And of course, we have been waiting and waiting for, for a pastor that God will send our way and to pastor our church. And uh, we are so grateful, especially today, our deep appreciation is shown to our very dear pastor Tim, Cruz, and Sky. Thank you very much. And, uh, this gift to you in appreciation of your service to us. Thank you everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Pastor. And uh, yes, I am so privileged to uh, be asked by the board to offer you a tribute, Pastor, and also, you know, an appreciation and for all the pastors that has being a part of this uh, wonderful church. I love this church and uh, and uh, I know that, you know, as I represent in prayers and tribute to you, uh, Pastor, um, I hope that out of the abundance of my heart, I could truly uh, give life to what I will be saying to you and to the pastors. Um, Pastor Tim, last night I was thinking Oh God, you know, help me to truly say your word. Not my word, but his word of truth. And uh, all of a sudden, what happened is in my mind, he reminded me of the good soul. You know, the parable of the sower and the different types of soil. There are different, four different types of soils, right? And I'm so grateful to God that the pastor that he chose for us is a good, fertile, and noble soil. Amen? Amen. And uh, that's what I've been thinking. And um, so because before that thought, I already have a nice gift for you to remind you of who you are in God's sight. And same thing with the pastors because God is the sower. He sowed the seed. And all this in front of us, for us, brothers and sisters, are good soil. His word grew. And the seed multiplied into beautiful crops, beautiful fruits. And in Matthew 13, 1 to 9, the good soil that, that uh, the sower has, you know, has sowed, no other than God, our mighty, mighty God, has rested on their heart. And the seed, just imagine, from that little seed, it grew into a robust tree with green leaves that will stay green forever and ever because they have the word. And they were always watered by God. Like they are planted by the streaming water, the water which is the word of God, that will always stay in, our, in their hearts and will come out to the nation. So those branches out of the little seed grew up into branches with beautiful crops, fruits that were 
was shared to all of us. And I wanted to really honor this men of God. They, they may not be prophets. They might not be the apostles that, that Jesus has led in the first coming. But in these last days, these are the branches of God, the branches that has leaves which are to heal the nations with the word of God. And so the question is, what kind of soil are we while God is sowing the seed? So that is a question. You've seen the products of this healthy, noble, and fertile seed. And my prayer is for all of us to have the seed growing in our heart. And what is that seed again? The Word of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's, let's stand up. Yeah. I'd like to request everyone to rise and extend your hand towards our pastors for the prayer of your seed. Let's ask God to surround us with His mighty Spirit. Holy Father, eternal God, thank you so very much for giving us this wonderful trees of life, Father God. You have planted in them, in their soil, the seed that you wanted to be distributed through their crops, Father God, that we may all have a partake of that seed that you have planted in them. And their duties have been, you have, you have given them their duties, Father God. And these men and women before you, Father, before your throne, are doing that, Father. They're sowing seeds wherever they are, whatever they do, Father God. I thank you so very much that they have given life in their words. And whoever is receiving those words, Father God, I pray that like them, the seed will grow with, with crops that will be multiplied in this world. Because we are the light of this world, Father God. May we always keep that light through these men and women before you, Father, that they are guiding their, their, uh, their sheep. And so, Father, we ask that you always be with them, strengthen them by your spirit of truth, strengthen them by your spirit of energy, Father God, that they will always have those crops staying green, growing crops every month, Father God. As in Revelation 22, Father, you promise us, Father, that these pastors that you have given us will be the tree of life. So, Father, we ask that in behalf of this congregation, Father, I ask that you will be with us always, that the seed will grow in us, and that we will be generous enough to share what we know about you. The deeper we know you, Father God, the stronger we want to share you. So, Father, bless all these uh, good pastors that you have chosen and brought to us, that touch our lives, their families, Father God, that they will all be healthy, strong, bold, and most of all, Father God, that the love that you have given them will be spread through all the nations, one person at a time. So, Father, with all this, in your mighty Son's precious name, our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Uh, not quite yet. Because I am so touched by you, Pastor, that I want you
Come picture. My back. <laughs> oh, it's mine. Smile with a heart. <laughs>